Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the speed control of DC series motor. Subscribe the channel for more videos and notification. Soft copy of this material available in the drive, the link is given in the description box. Now we will go to the topic, the speed control of DC series motor. Series motor means armature and field are connected in series. First we will see the flex control method. There are two methods available, flex control and armature resistance control. First we will see the flux control method. So the variation in the flux of a series motor can be brought about the following methods. We know that the flux and speed are inversely proportional. By increasing the flux, the speed can decreases. By decreasing the flux, speed can increases. Both are inversely proportional. So that the flux and speed are inversely proportional. The flux can be varied by this following method. First we will see the field divider. One rheostate is connected across the field winding, this series field winding, so that the current will be diverted through the divider. The current flowing through this field winding can be controlled by this divider. So, the based on the resistor value, the current will be divided, so that we can control the current flowing through this field winding. When the current is controlled, the flux produced also controlled. By controlling the flux, we can control the speed of this motor. So, this is we know that this is the rotating part armature, this is the stationary part. Across, across the stationary part, we connected the divider. A variable resistance known as field divider is connected in parallel with the, with the series field winding. Right? The field divider is connected in parallel with the series field winding. By varying the resistance of the divider, the current flowing through the field series field winding can be varied so that the flux can be decreased thereby the speed of the motor can be increased so by control by connecting this divider what will happen the current will be diverted so the current flowing through this field winding is reduces so the field flux also reduces due to reduce in flux the speed will increases because flux and speed are inversely proportional right so by using the divider we are controlling the field current thereby flux, thereby speed of the motor. Second method is the armature divider. Now the rheostate is connected across the armature. Previously it is connected across the field winding. Now it is connected across armature. So what will happen? A divider is connected in parallel to the armature winding to vary the current flowing through the armature. Now we can vary the current flowing through this armature. The current will flowing through the armature, the current will be diverted here. For a constant low torque, if IA is reduced due to the armature divider, then the flux pi must increases. Because TA is directly proportional to pi into IA. If pi, I, pi is, if IA decreases means automatically pi will increase because torque is constant. In order to maintain the constant torque, if one parameter decreases, mean another parameter automatically will increase. Right? Now the flux is increases. If the flux increases, what will happen? High current is taken from the supply. The flux pi increases. Right? So speed and flux are inversely proportional. So with increase in flux, the speed will decreases. Right? So by varying this armature divider the armature current reduces at that time the flux, the flux must be increased in order to maintain the constant torque. So while increasing the flux automatically the speed will decreases. It will take more current from the supply and flux increases thereby speed will decreases. Now we will go to the third method. So third one is the tapped field, co field control. The field winding the tappings are available. In the first method, we connected the divider. If you connect the divider, what will happen? The current will flowing through the divider. The voltage will be dropped. The voltage will be wasted. The power will be wasted. That can be avoided by using the tapping. So by connecting the tapping, if you connect here, we are using entire field winding. If it is connected here, we are using only less amount of field winding. So by varying this, Automatically, if you connect here, only less amount of flux will produce. If you keep on moving this side, we are able to increase the flux produced in the field winding. Right? So that is done by the 
the tappings. So, there is no power loss. We are using either full coil or a minimum amount of coil. Tappings are taken from the series field winding. The number of series field turn can be varied in steps and correspondingly there is a variation in the value of the resistance and hence current varies, field current, series field current. So, the flux also varies thereby resulting in the variation of the speed. So, by varying this by using the tapping we can vary the series field winding. So, the resistance will vary. So, the field coil current will vary. So, flux will vary. So, finally, there is a variation in the speed of the motor, right. There is no resistor here. The series field coil itself is itself the tappings are available. Third, fourth method is the paralleling of field coils. So, we can connect with the different combinations. Here, four coils, four different coils are available. We can use either one coil, two coil or three coil or all four coils. So, accordingly the resistance will vary, current will vary, field, so flux will vary, so that speed will vary. Similarly, it can be connected in a two parallel set, two coils connected in series, another two coil connected in series that also connected in parallel. You can use, we can use only these two coils or these two coils or all four coils. In another method, one more resistor is connected, divider. So, the current can be diverted here. So, either by series or parallel or with the, the rheostat, we can vary the current flowing through the field winding. So, that flux also varied due to flux variation, the speed of the motor will vary. So, these are all three different combinations. So, in this diagram, in this method, by regrouping the field coil as shown in diagram, variable combination of resistance of field winding can be obtained. So, based on our usage, the field winding, the resistance of the field winding is varied. We can use either one, two coil or three coil or all four coils. Accordingly, the field winding resistance will vary. So, that the variation in the speed will be obtained. Right. So, this first four method this is a flux control. The flux is controlled by the, by connecting the divider or by using the tapping or parallel or series combination of the coils. The second method is the variable resistance in series with the motor. Here one variable resistor is connected. Right. So, the series motor, the armature or field are connected in series. In series with that we connected one resistor. By increasing the resistance in series with the armature, the voltage applied across the armature terminal can be decreased. So, we can vary the voltage applied to the armature winding. So, if it is placed in this position, minimum resistance position, maximum voltage will be applied. If you keep on increase this position, the resistance will increase. So, the voltage applied to the motor will decreases. So, if the voltage decreases, the speed will also decreases. With the reduced voltage across the armature, the speed will reduced. So, in this second method, we are varying the up voltage applied to the armature. By reducing the voltage, speed also reduces. The first method, flux control. We are controlling the flux by using four different methods. The second method, armature voltage is controlled. So, in this video, we discuss about the speed control of series motor. There are two different methods available. Subscribe the channel for more videos and notification. The soft copy of this material available in the drive. The link is given in the description box. Thank you for listening.